Hello, you're listening to the OmniTalk Fast Five, brought to you in partnership with Microsoft, the A&M Consumer and Retail Group, Takeoff, Sezzle, and Silk. We take off with big and pun intended news out of Target this week, Anne. I love when you can get a pun in there, Chris. Just oh, it won't be the first. It I won't be the, it'll be, it'll, it'll be the last. Our, I mean, Ann. Yes, it's just the our first of many more. Everybody's everybody's well aware of this. So let's get to it. So headline number one: Target last week, in advance of dismal Q3 earnings, announced a new, larger 150,000 square foot format. So according to Retail Dive, the format will be its primary development focus in the coming years, while it will still continue to open stores of other sizes as well. The extra square footage includes five times more space for the backroom fulfillment than a traditional Target store has. And the format also has space for more merchandise assortment, including room for expanded food and beverage selection, according to Target. Lastly, the company also pointed out to years, quote, years of research. Yes. We we have no idea what they're talking about of uh, research behind the new design and this larger store strategy. Jonathan, we're going to go to you, our seasoned veteran here. Uh, what are we supposed to be making of this headline? Is this like the real deal here? Is this just PR trying to pump everybody up before the, the earnings report came out this week? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, big box is back, right? Um <laughs> Uh, it ne- did it ever go away? But we're allowed to talk about it again. Um, yes. So look, here's my uh, view on this. Uh, f- well, firstly, I guess to your first question around, was this just a kind of a cookie to throw to the street because yeah. of some bad earnings? It's quite a risky one for that, right? Because it implies capital intensity. So um, you would actually not be happy as an analyst uh, with a company that's having earnings trouble then saying, our capital intensity is going to go up. So I, I can't imagine it's that. Um, first of all, my reaction was, as I said, which is, whoa, big box is back. Uh, flares will be back. And, uh, you know, I'll be fashionable again. Um, but um, Flares are back, Jonathan. That's like, <laughs> on, I mean, that's what you should be buying right now. I know, I realized, as I said game. it, which I just kind of outed myself. <laughs> Let's not talk crazy, crazy, Jonathan. You're being fashionable. That, that's, that's ludicrous. Okay. I'm so off the zeitgeist. It's unbelievable. But... Um, uh, look, so first of all, I thought, right, okay, so it's big box. Where are they putting the space? Uh, yeah. are, are they actually going to crack grocery at last? Mm-hmm. Uh, are they going to uh, get rid of this kind of quite problem I've always thought they had, which is they're quite compartmentalized, which is it's quite difficult to shop all of the stuff that they try to be credible and authoritative in. But the more I've thought about this, I wonder actually if this is not the return of big box stores. This is actually the expansion of kind of dark stores and fulfillment centers. Yeah. Yep. It, this is a fulfillment center play, yes. isn't it? This is a 24 hour fulfillment, compete with Amazon Prime delivery and do a bit of extra retail on the back, probably um, with an attempt to crack grocery because that drives traffic. Um, so that was kind of my sense. And the, the other thing that I was thinking about was the other reason I can't think it's a kind of pure retail big box play is that a lot of the messages coming out of our consumer sentiment survey post COVID and continuing is that consumers are uh, consolidating their shop. Mm -hmm. uh, And therefore, you know, are uh, Target really going to pick up the sort of the marginal grocery shopper uh, by with them fragmenting their shop? I'm not so sure. Um, this feels to me like an Amazon Prime play. Yeah. yeah. I, interesting. Interesting. I agree completely. I think, you know, it's only 20,000 square feet in the grand scheme of things. So, it, and most of that, I presume, will be going to, you know, back of house. That's That makes sense as they're expanding distribution centers, they're expanding sortation centers. But Billy, what are your, what's your take here? I, I agree with Jonathan. I thought my thoughts Im- immediately on this where this is all about a, a DC you know, yeah. type setup. The one thing I will say that did excite me from the article was the picture, and which I'm guessing is from that store in Houston that yes. they were, you know, that, that the article mentioned. The covered bays as a as a pickup point. Right. That as a consumer got that gets me excited because too many times I've done that in inclement weather, and that's not a great experience yes. for the store associate or for the customer. So if that's part, if that's baked into what their, you know, what their plans are, I, I think that's super. And I actually think that that's a, a positive 
mm -hmm. you know, for them and will will be a differentiator because I haven't at scale at least seen anybody else attempt that. Um, so I think that would be a really big differentiator for them if that's if that's, you know, baked into what they're trying to do. Yeah, that is it is a, a grand architectural gesture for sure. I mean, the likes of which I think, you know, we've started to see at HEB. Chris and I went down to their Frisco store last week. They have the the big covered awnings. But yeah, you're right. Like even Walmarts are are quite, quite small when you compare it to that rendering that we saw at the Houston store. But Chris, you have some strong opinions here. We'll go to you next. And, and I'd like you to share what yeah. you think about this this announcement I, I do i think there's some subtle points that you can pick up in this announcement too which i think are really interesting i agree with both of what jonathan and billy said like it, it seems like it's a fulfillment play it's a it's a micro warehousing play for the most part because you're right it's an incremental twenty thousand square feet which on a hundred hundred and twenty five thousand square foot box really isn't all that much extra space but you know i think it's funny the story to me because like honestly like how many of these can they actually build they have like two thousand stores already throughout the country like the incremental value of these has got to be relatively small on the sales side it's only got to be for a distribution play to the point mm -hmm. but the other counter to me is that in the headline is what it implies about the small store strategy because you know they were big in the small store thing for a while now they're saying they're going the opposite direction which I think is a proof point, which we've been saying all along, which is the small store strategy is really a road to nowhere when you have that many stores already throughout the country, because it's going to be smaller volume stores. You can only build so many of them. It's not going to drive significant growth and comp in the long run. So that's what I take away from it here, which begs another question to me, which is how is Target going to continue to move the needle on growth? There's Where's the dry powder in the keg at Target? They don't have a subscription program like Walmart Plus or Amazon Prime. They have no target technology services, a la like Walmart or Amazon does. They're not looking at that from a business to business standpoint at all from, from what our sources are telling us. So like, you know, so my question is like, I think at this point, we've seen the height of what Target can be during the pandemic when everyone was forced to be a one-stop shop. And Brian Cornell, as lucky as he is, was the guy that happened to be at the dealer table, at the blackjack table, right when the dealer busted. And so I think that's my question here is where's the growth coming from? It's not going to be a large format store. Yeah, Chris, I, I'm with you. I mean, for me, the biggest disappointment in this announcement was where's the tech? Where's the investment in, you know, checkout free, a, a checkout free small format store, like taking mm -hmm. some of this 20,000 square feet and making it, you know, more convenient for customers to shop. Like, yes, you have curbside, but like, what other investments are you making target? There was nothing that was discussed in this. And most of those investments, even though they're, you know, they're tech investments require some consideration from the infrastructural build out of the store. Like even, you know what I was surprised to see Billy was mentioning the overhang, like where's the Starbucks updates? Like, are they going to put a Starbucks right. next to curbside pickup now? If they're going to be doing like Starbucks to like, and none of that, that part is included too, right? in this. Yep. And I love, love design as much as the next person. We spent a lot of time on it when we were at target, Chris, but I bet if you asked a target customer, would they rather have quote plants and regionally sourced reclaimed wood? end quote, or a shorter checkout line at Target, they would choose the latter and right. that it was not even addressed here. And I'm cannot believe it. So wow. yes, better distribution it, play, but scathing. I mean, come on, Target, come on. Jonathan, Chris. last word before we go to headline number two. Well, Chris, and to your point, it, it, the thing that struck me in the last few weeks was if you looked at the quarterly report, mm -hmm. reporting cycle, right? You could arguably make a case that Walmart is beginning to meet the battle with Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. you'd, also to, you'd also have to make the case that Target's just missed the invite to the war, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's my point. There, yeah. there is clearly a battle going to be joined between Walmart and Amazon. Target just aren't there. Yeah. yeah. Your, yeah. To your technology, to your point around kind of where's the growth, it was a it wasn't just their results, it was the it was the comparison relative to others. Yeah. Right. Then there's a difference between being being lucky and being good. And I think we're going to find out what what that means for Target here in the long run. 